So looking ahead, test is next block day. We got two days to review, so we'll be we'll be fine by the time we get there. All right, polar circles and roses. Um, several classic polar functions. Um, these are sort of um, the parent functions in polar land. Um, just like you know what a line looks like, and you know what a, a parabola looks like, and you know what absolute value, all those parent functions on the xy plane you're pretty familiar with. On the polar front, you're not going to get that familiar with them because we don't spend enough time to get that familiar with them. Um, but you do need to be, you know, sort of roughly familiar with, <laughs> you already know what a circle looks like. Um, and we'll learn, again, circles and roses, that's, that's today. Cardioids and limosons, that's tomorrow. Um, and to just give away the game here at the very beginning, circles are sort of one petaled roses. So that's why they go together. I know you don't look at that and think, oh, that's a one petaled rose. But the, the formula, the equation, um, is where that sort of comes from. So that's why they, they group together. Even though their graphs don't look alike, their equations look alike. And we'll talk about how many petals, it, how to know how many petals there are. And if there's one petal, well, it turns into a circle. So a circle is sort of a special case of a rose. All right, so circles. Here's our equations of a circle. R equals A. This would be the easy one to, to think about. That would just be all the points where the radius is 3 or 5 or 7 or whatever. And so it's centered at the origin, and you just go out 3 or 5 or 7 or whatever. Um, in fact, let's skip down to the example here. Circle centered at the origin. So R equals 2 would mean we go out 2. And we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So if we start at 0 and we rotate around, but we're always going to be 2 away from the origin. circle for the first one. All right, if r equals negative 1, this is going to feel a little weird, especially when I draw it, how I'm going to draw it. If I start at 0, theta equals 0, and r is negative 1, where does this graph start? I'm pointing at the wrong place here. Yeah, it really is going to start over here. We'll worry about this more later, about like where they start and the direction they go. It's not as important right now. But this is an easy one to see how that happens. If I go to pi over 2 and then go negative 1, I'm down here. So I still get a circle of radius 1. But it, it had a weird starting point, but that's because of the negative 1. Be careful how we phrase this. I would say it's the same final graph as r equals 1. Meaning, if you really slowed down and thought about how it was made, you got there a different way, but in the end it was the same picture. Does that make sense? Because r equals 1 would start over here. r equals negative 1 starts over here. At the end of the day, they look the same, but it was sort of a different process to get there. Right now, we're not really even worried about the process, but we will eventually. And this is the easy one to see that on. OK, that's the easy one. Now, these next two, um, cosine and sine, 
which variable does cosine normally go with? So forget about all this. Think back to the unit circle. Cosine usually goes with which variable? X. Sine usually goes with? That same thought process will carry through uh, all of these graphs. So as long as you can still in your brain remember that X goes with cosine, Y goes with sine, that will be a big help. So this R equals A cosine theta is a circle on the X axis because cosine goes with X with a diameter of A, all caps. So be careful, R equals A, that's how far out you go, that's the radius. But when you look at this one, A is the diameter. And sine goes with Y. OK, um, let's just graph some here. R equals 3 cosine theta. In fact, if you ever get stuck, you can kind of plot points and figure it out. If I plug in theta equals 0, what's cosine of 0? 1, and then 3 times 1 would be 3. So if I, I'll be, I would be starting right there. And then the diameter is 3. And it's on the x-axis. So it looks like that. And then this may seem weird, but you only need to go 0 to pi to get one full graph. If you did go 0 to 2 pi, um, you tra it would trace out the circle twice. If we had time to play with the calculators, you can you can force the calculator to slow down to see the graph. And if you do 0 to 2 pi, you would see it go around once and then go around again. So 0 to pi is enough to get the full graph. Um, what do you think r equals negative 4 cosine theta looks like? Any, any guesses? What does the negative usually do in math class? flips it to the other side. So let's flip it to the other side. We'll have a diameter of 4. So there's my graph of negative 4 cosine theta. So negative does what it always does. Like big picture, negative flips things over. 3 sine theta? Well, sine suggests y-axis. Let's go out 3. There's my 3 sine theta circle. Negative 2, that's going to be a flip. Circles aren't bad. Cosine is in the x direction, sine is in the y direction. Just be careful about uh, radius versus diameter. <coughs> Roses. Okay, here's the little asterisk. Note the similarity to the equation of a circle, uh, namely, if if n equals 1, then your rows becomes a circle. If that makes sense. If n is 1, then you've got a, a special case of a rose that's just a circle. OK, this gets a little bit goofy here. <clears throat> if n is odd, you have n petals. If n is odd, you have n petals. If n is even, you have 
two n petals. So if n is odd, you have that many petals. If n is even, you got twice that many petals. And because, not because really, but because you have twice as many petals, you got to go 0 to 2 pi to see everything. If n is odd, you only got to go to pi. If you go to 2 pi, it just retraces its steps and like copies the graph onto itself. If you're, if you're graphing with a calculator, you always just leave it 0 to 2 pi because who cares if it copies over itself? No big deal. You still see everything. Okay, cosine roses. Again, cosine, we are thinking x-axis. If n is even and cosine, and you have petals on every axis, um, and you draw the petals evenly around. Um, you know what? Let's, let's back up. Let's just jump to this one. If cosine of 2 theta, how many petals are we going to have? How many petals? So four petals. And one of them will be on the x-axis because it's cosine. My petal length is three, so out three. So I know I'll have one petal on the x-axis of length three. I have to equally space four petals. Like that's sort of the easiest number of petals to equally space, right? Because there's there's four axes sort of, so we'll have four petals. This is a fun one to watch the calculator draw. Uh, I'll draw it like the calculator draws it. Now, later we'll worry about that order, but most of the time you're just going to draw the four petals and be good. Right, negative three cosine two theta. So how many petals? Four petals. One on the x-axis. Length of three. What's going to be different about this one? <laughs> so you're sort of both right. It's going to start on the opposite side, but it's going to be the same thing. Right, because if I flip that over, well, it still looks the same. So yeah, if you watch the calculator draw it, it would start over here, and I'd really have to think about if it went up first or down first. But at the end of the day, it's going to look exactly the same. This is not the direction or the, the way it draws it, but that's the way we draw them. Ooh, in theory, those are all the same uh, size petal. How many petals for this next one? Eight, eight. eight petals. One on the x-axis. One, two, three, four, five. And I need to equally space eight. And that's not bad either to equally space eight. So it'll just be like one on all the 45 degree markers or one at all the pi over fours. Uh, so these petals are going to be a little bit narrower because they don't um, they don't overlap. They're like tangent to each other down here. So I, I guess I should have done a, a nicer job down there. So these are going to be narrower petals. In fact, I'm going to sort of cheat and draw the, the four in first. And then I'll come back and squeeze four more in. I still want r to be 5. It would be helpful if I had more of a graph to... Right, in theory, I've got a nice circle that that fits in. How 
many pedals is the next one going to have? With one on the x-axis. Um, but these are going to be really narrow because I got to get sort of three per quadrant, right? One on the quadrant marker and then two in the middle to get to get to twelve. So again, I'll draw the four first, and then I got to put two more in each quadrant, equally spaced. Again, if you had if you had a better graph, you could lay it, lay it out perfectly because these are, I guess these are going to be at all the over sixes and over threes. Um, and I will not be grading your artistic ability on, on these. I mean, as long as I can tell that there's clearly 12 petals, <coughs> that you made some attempt to make them, you know, equally s sized, and you don't have one that's that fills up a whole quadrant, and then the rest are. So make an effort to make them look good. All right, if n is odd, then you have n number of petals. You still have one on the x-axis. So with cosine, you're always going to have one on the x-axis. So I would just—that's the easy way to remember that. Cosine, um, always one on the x-axis. Okay, three cosine, three theta. So three petals, one on the x-axis. Um, only three. So these can be like a little bit fatter here. And I got to equally space three of them. So again, plan ahead. I'm not going to get out a protractor and measure things, but you know, if you wanted to be extra careful, you could think that equally spaced would be two pi over three and four pi over three. So maybe it's helpful to. Equally spaced three petals. How many petals for the next one? Five. So this gets a little bit more of a pain. Five petals, equally spaced. Um, what's the negative going to do? So there's one on like the negative x-axis. So my first one's going to be over here. And then how to equally space five. Like a five point star. That's kind of weird to think about. Um, your brain probably still thinks in degrees more than radians. If you want to do it this way, 360 divided by five would be 72. Now again, I'm not getting out a protractor and marking out every 72 degrees, but that at least helps me think through <coughs> I need to be 72 degrees away from this one. So I don't know. That looks like 72 to me. 72 on that side. Got two more to go. Ugh. I feel like I did a pretty good job of equally spacing them. I didn't do a great job of equally sizing them. But again, the point is going to be, clearly there's five petals. You put it on the negative x-axis. They're roughly equally spaced, and they're roughly the same size. Let's see. Negative five. So again, there's one on the negative x-axis. Three petals. Five. 
three is not too bad. Again, you don't have to do that little helper line, but maybe it helps you sort of visualize spacing three of them. How about that next one? How many petals? Seven petals. Where's the first one? Positive x-axis. So that's the easy part. 360 divided by 7. And again, I'm eyeballing here, so I'm, that's 50-ish, right? 7 times 5 is 35. I'm not going to get any more accurate than that. So a little more than 45 for my first one. Oh, that's yuck. And the petals aren't supposed to overlap. So I need to get four more on the other side. So two in the top, two in the bottom. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it. That's not bad. They're supposed to be evenly spaced. They're supposed to be evenly sized. But it gets tricky when you're drawing seven petals. Uh, let's go backwards a little bit here. So let's see. How many petals does this one have? Three. Um, it's on the x-axis, so I know it's cosine. So I know it's cosine of 3 theta. And how far out? How long are my petals? Also 3. So I think we said that was A. A is 3. So 3 cosine 3 theta. How many petals on the next one? Well, careful. How many petals are there? Oh. Addy, answer my question. <laughs> you answer the next question, which is fine. Your brain's ahead of me here. Four petals, so what does that mean? N is two. Cosine two theta, and they are out. Four is that sort of the, the petal radius, if you want to call it that. This one has a bit of a trick to it. There's another potential answer. What's that? Negative four. Because what would the negative do to the graph? Flip it, but then it would look the same. So we don't really know if it was a positive 4 cosine theta or a negative 4 cosine 2 theta. So how many tests would you have to write those? Um, I, I don't want to answer that yet. I don't think so. I think I would accept either. Most people are just going to write the positive one. Um, we could try to trick you on a multiple choice, right, and not have the positive answer there but have the negative answer there. Let's see, next one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven petals. So N is seven. What do I need to be careful about that one? Let's see, it's three. Radius is three. But why is that not my answer? negative because there's one on the negative x-axis then lastly gosh just be careful like mark them or something make sure you count them correctly so I have to mark the first one that I counted 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15, 16 16 petals 
So that means n was 8. And I can't even tell how far out that is. I think that's a 4 there. And that's another one that could have been flipped. So negative 4 cosine. Oops, 8 theta, not 80. Okay. Things get a little bit weird here. For a cosine rose, you always have a pedal on the x-axis. Maybe it's the positive x-axis. Maybe it's the negative x-axis. For a sine rose, and this all relates to this, sine of 0 is 0. You have pedals on no axes. All pedals lie in between the axes. Okay, this is this is kind of weird because your brain is used to thinking, all right, cosine goes with x, sine goes with y. Not this one. Sine doesn't go with anything. Don't put one on the x-axis or the y-axis. <coughs> so two theta means four pedals. not on an axis, but equally spaced. So we're just going to put them in between the axes. Ooh, that last pedal got a little bit dwarf pedal there. Again, in theory, all my pedals are equally spaced and equally sized. Uh, and if we want to indicate the three, um, sometimes we sort of sort of draw a radius out there and say say that that's three. Okay, negative three sine two theta. So four pedals. Well, it's going to look like that one, except it's going to be flipped up and down, which means it's going to look the same. Like So the sketching of it would be different, but at the end of the day, it would look the same. Let's see if I can draw four better looking petals on this one. Yes, slightly. And again, that's r equals 3 because it's 3 out. Next one, eight petals. So I'm going to equally space eight petals. N don't land any of them on the axis. So that means two per quadrant. So I always feel like the more petals there are, the worse my picture is. <coughs> I mean, that's not terrible, but that fourth quadrant looks a little bit jammed up, but that's okay. Speaking of jammed up, how many pedals on that last one here? Oh, so I got to fit three per quadrant. It's probably the easiest way to think of that. Um, I think that does mean there'll be one right in the middle, though. Maybe so. Maybe that's the easy way to go, or an easy way to get started, anyway. sized as they should be. Okay, because signs are kind of tricky, there's, well, let me give you the tricky part and then the good news. So bad news, good news, right? 
uh, all of those were n is even, so those were kind of relatively easy to space out. If n is odd, then you do have a pedal on the y-axis, but you don't know which pedal it is, like or which axis it is. So if n is 1, it's the top one. If n is 3, it's the bottom one. If n is 5, it's top 7. So there's a pattern there, but that's really complicated. You won't have to know how to graph sine roses with an odd number of petals because that's just too much to figure out. But you will need to recognize them and match them up. So if we look at number one, um, there's not a pedal on the x-axis, so I can throw out the cosines for sure. And then once I throw out the cosines, well, it's easy because there's five pedals. So it's got to be the five theta. So graphing them by hand is hard, but we won't have you graph the worst ones by hand. But we do expect you to match them up. Let's see. Nothing on the x-axis, so I can throw my cosines out. Three petals, so it's got to be three. That fourth theta would have eight petals, so definitely not him. And then why don't you try three and four? since it's just matching. I don't feel bad for him on popsicle sticks for help. <coughs> so, Michael, how about number three? Yes. Let's see. It's definitely a cosine because it's on the x-axis. And there's three petals, so yes. Emily, you kind of have to squint and count there. Which one is that? Actually, you don't really have to count because you look at your answer choices, and there's clearly not three petals there. And it's not on an x-axis, so you're right. It's a sign. There's 11 petals, so it's D. So sketching them on your own, kind of a pain. Matching them up, not too bad. Cosine, always on an x-axis. Sign, kind of weird. But you usually don't have to worry about it. Short answer. Okay, we've mentioned this before. Now we'll dive into it a little bit deeper here to know like how the graph is formed, not just the final product. So let's graph four cosine theta, showing how it's formed, starting with um, theta equals zero. I, and I think just a table of values in order will help. So let's start with theta equals 0. R is 4 cosine of theta. Cosine of 0 is 1. So this one starts at 0, 4. Well, should be careful because we do R theta, so 4, 0. But it feels backwards because we plug in theta even though it's R comma theta. Um, all right, where should we go next? You know what? Maybe we should have, before we even graph this like this, let's do a little sketch. Uh, what shape is this going to be? And I would take two answers there. A circle. If you set it to rows, how many how many petals will it have? One which would be a circle. So it should be a circle on the positive x-axis. So I know I know what it should look like, but I'm, right now I'm trying to figure out like how it gets there. So let's pick out. I don't think I want to go to pi over 2, because at pi over 2 I'm going to be back at 0, and I won't know which way I went to get there. So let's pick out something less than pi over 2. Um, Oh, let's be smart here. What would give us an easy value to work with? Unit circle experts. 
Cosine of what would give me a nice answer? Let's go pi over 3. Yeah, you can do it with any with pi over 6 or pi over 4, but pi over 3 is going to give me an easier answer. 4 cosine pi over 3. Cosine pi over 3 is a half. 2. two. So pi over 3 is roughly right there. And 2 is roughly right there, maybe. So now I know which way I'm going. Suppose I could pick 2 pi over 3 as well. 4 cosine 2 pi over 3. Oh, that's negative, so be careful. So if I go to 2 pi over 3, so if I go rotate to 2 pi over 3, but then I go backwards to. land right there. So that, that still fits the pattern here. And you don't have to do very many points to figure out which way this thing is going. Okay, let's see if we got enough points to answer the questions though. Between 0 and pi over 2 is f of theta, so is r, Positive or negative? Positive, positive yeah, because between zero and pi over two, we were we were positive. Yeah. On zero to pi over two is f of theta, I'm just gonna say r, is r increasing or decreasing? Is r increasing or decreasing? Well, it went from 4 to 2, so that sounds like decreasing. On the picture, this is a little bit weird to look at because increasing and decreasing on, on a xy plane is just like, well, is it getting out taller or smaller? But increasing, decreasing on one of these planes, we have to think about distance from the origin. So we started at 4, and then we got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So we, we are decreasing either from the table, from the numbers, or even looking at the graph, we're getting closer to the origin. So graphically, it's kind of tricky. On the interval 0 to pi over 2, is the distance between a point on the curve and the origin increasing or decreasing? Oh, we just answered this. It's getting that, that distance is getting smaller, so it's decreasing. So decreasing, usually decreasing means getting lower. That's what we think of as decreasing. But in polar land, increasing means getting farther away from, farther from the origin. And decreasing means getting closer to the origin. So you kind of have to adjust your brain. You're not thinking, is it going up or down? That's an XY kind of thinking. Polar thinking is, am I getting further away or am I getting closer in? Am I increasing, getting farther out? Am I decreasing, getting closer in? All right, from pi over 2 to pi. Uh, f of theta was negative. That's why I did the flip over thing. Now is f of theta increasing or decreasing? This is where we have to be careful in terms of the graph. Because the graph is like getting further away, but our values, let's pick pi and see what happens. The sine of pi is negative 1. So this point we could say is negative uh, 4 pi. Oh. 
So when we go from negative 2 to negative 4, is that increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. But I'm getting further away from the origin. If r is positive, so it's really tricky on the increasing, decreasing stuff. If r is positive, then you can sort of visualize, yeah, that means getting bigger or smaller. But if r is negative, it's like your brain is inverted. And it's probably better to just list some points and see what's happening. Um, so that's what we said a minute ago. Zero to, from pi over 2 to pi, our distance is increasing. Our distance is increasing because we're getting further further farther getting farther away from the origin <clears throat> but r is decreasing uh, well that's a calculus thing <coughs> if this is sort of like Two negatives make a positive. R is negative. R is decreasing. And the combination of those things means the actual distance is increasing. I don't think this is one of those things that you try to memorize all these combinations. You sketch out the picture and then answer what's asked. Don't try to memorize. I don't think that would work very well. Sketch the picture, make a table of values if you need to, and then and then think through it. All right, today's assignment is worksheet two. We'll go over those tomorrow and probably get your test back um, uh, block day at the latest.